friends welcome back to my studio hope you're well today I'd like to share about deli paper and how to make your own but first of all let's talk about what is the difference what's all the fuss about what's so special about deli paper and how to use it in your art practice so we'll turn the camera around of course so you can see what I've got here in front of me here is my selection of papers deli paper is a lunch wrap in Australia we don't really have anything like that I, I seem to remember we had something called luncheon wrap or lunch wrap but I had to send away to the US to get this so that's why I thought it'd be worth showing you for those viewers in Australia that can't access deli paper easily how to make your own and no you cannot use baking paper it is not the same baking paper or I imagine that's the equivalent is the parchment paper is designed for baking so it has a silicon coating put on it this is some baking paper here or grease proof paper sometimes it's called and it's designed to withstand the heat in the oven and to not burn and to stop your food sticking and because of that sort of coating it doesn't hold so good old Posca pen that will go on absolutely everything and it comes it comes off even on the other side because the coating is on both sides. You can see as I draw that on, hopefully, it's starting to spread and be repelled by the silicone. So that's a dud. And this here is tissue paper, just plain tissue that you would wrap, that we use here to wrap presents in. And while it will hold paint and media, when you wet it, the tissue just tears. It's really, really delicate. And so when you're then trying to paint that with some matte medium or something to apply that then to your painting surface, it rips. Or if you're trying to make collage paper with it, as you're painting on or putting ink on, it, it will tear. So that's where this tissue paper or deli paper comes into play. I ordered this at, from the UK and they call it stay wet tissue paper and it has a one side is just the same as the normal tissue paper and then the other side has this little wax resist on it and it means that when you wet it firstly you get this lovely see-through nature to it so when you're putting it on your mixed media work the white of the paper goes and it's just you're just left with whatever you've collaged onto there or any color or marks that you've added onto there and it's really really tough i'm applying quite a bit of pressure before i can get that to tear and oh, that way i can barely tear it so that's the benefit the two, two main benefits of using deli paper is the fact that it can take plenty of media, plenty of paint, ink, and I've got some samples here where I've put some ink on. So this has got these Pearl Essence water-based ink on them. And as you can see, it's held the media really, really well and it's still really super tough and here's one where I've put some paint and stencils and I've already used a piece of it so really put anything on this and it will will hold and then as I said when you put it on a painting surface if I just use this old piece as a as an example say we were going to Put a piece on here okay. 
get a little bit of matte medium down. And hopefully you can see this, when this dries, this will be more evident. But see how you can see the painting underneath? And there's a little bit more of the painting showing there. So this, the white part of this deli paper almost um, dissolves, if you like, it, and it becomes clear. And so you can build up really, really lovely layers with it because of this nature that you can get this underpainting showing through. So how do you make your own? So here's a piece of normal tissue paper and a good old cold wax medium that I made, showed you how to make in a previous video and I will put the link somewhere on your screen to that. And it's just a matter of putting some of this, a very thin layer, working a very thin layer. Across all of the paper. And you can see some of the background is showing, so it's already making it translucent. It's important to have the wax very very thin so as you can see I'm putting it on and then taking the excess off and then once that dries, that effectively will be exactly like deli paper. And I've got a piece that I prepared earlier, which I've managed to get matte medium all over. But this is a piece of tissue paper that I've treated with the cold wax and it's dried. And now when I wet it, you can see the water is beading rather than soaking in and it's really really tough again rather than being that delicate as they say tissue paper it's it's very fine ply and then on your non-waxed side you can add all of your media that you want to put on Let it dry and you will end up with having collage paper you can use just like these pieces. The other great thing about this is that you can put it on your serviette. This is a single ply serviette and I've coated this with the cold wax medium and it has since dried. I did tear it a little bit as I was putting the cold wax medium on. So it is a delicate process, but again, it's beading and you can, yeah, I mean, it still t tears, it's still tissue paper but you'll get a lot more strength and longevity out of that to be able to apply to your painting surface and to apply other media onto with this cold wax medium onto your tissue paper. I did get some of this beeswax out of the shed to try, but I haven't tried it yet because it's working so well with the cold wax medium. And even though this is toy polish, so it's designed for children's toys that if they put it in their mouth, it's totally safe. 
I'm not sure about the resistance then of sticking this to your paint surface, how much that would repel. So I've decided, even though I was going to show you, I think it would be really best to stay just with the cold wax medium. You'll need plenty of matte, matte medium or whatever else you use to stick your collage papers down because it has got that waxy surface. And the key would be to apply it in a really, really thin, really thin layer. So one of these tools is is really, really great. I showed this in a previous vlog. It's a miser. Miser Mister. I don't know how to pronounce it, but that's what you're looking for. They make kitchen utensils and this is a bowl scraper and it's just really super good for applying and then scraping, scraping back. So once that's dry, you effectively have deli paper. If you would pre prefer to source your own deli paper, this is, I got this from the UK and it's used in professional book binding. It's the tissue paper you find in books. So if you Google that, you will probably come across it. I think again, it was an Amazon purchase, but it took me a lot of searching to find out what that, what it was. And the key is that it only has the wax surface on one side and it's still a nice porous tissue. You can feel that this is very smooth and this is rougher. So the key is to find paper. Be careful when you order, if you're ordering paper, I'm not gonna make your own, that you're buying a paper that is only waxy on the one side. And certainly don't try and use any baking paper, grease proof paper, brown paper, anything that's for cooking because it's got, as I said, it's got both sides that are waxy and because of the type of wax or silicon that's on them, it will repel your paint and ink. I've been experimenting in the studio lately and a couple of other uses that I found for this deli paper is for mopping up the surface I've been playing around with glazing and spraying a lot of water on the work. And I just laid this tissue paper on and was able to pick up this paint. And I'll be able to use this now as collage paper in another piece. And this, I actually applied the paint to the deli paper. I'll just call it deli paper, whether it's homemade one version or not. But I painted some of this aqua green light on the surface and then I stamped it and onto the canvas and used the roller to roll that off. So almost like a stamp or a, um, a wet transfer. And I'll show you on the artwork. This has got a few more layers over the top but essentially this this area here and that that area there not all of it was picked up so it gave me this really interesting texture to it so that's another fun way you can use the tissue paper where it's just so strong that you can use it like that for stamping and this is an area where I also stamped, well, I've got too much on the bench. That area there is where I had the wet paint and I've laid plain tissue paper over the top and peeled it back. And it's given again, this really lovely, it's got paint over the top again, but that bluey color in there is the pattern that has been left and with the paper that I pulled off there I have collaged onto onto this piece 
so there's the edge you can see I've, I've painted over the top but that's what it looked like when I peeled it back off that surface so yeah you can really play around and get and make a whole lot of material as you're creating something you're creating a heap of other useful papers so it's a real rabbit hole <laughs> worth exercise uh, this is something new that i'm playing i haven't shown this it's not finished this is something new i've been playing around in experimentation and this is again where i've put the tissue paper down and peeled it off so yeah lots of lots of fun textures and that's it for today it's just a quick one because as you saw it's a very very simple process and there's so much you can do with cold wax medium and with tissue paper creating collage paper and all sorts of wonderful things i'd love to know how you get on if you use this let me know in the comments i'm going shopping on the weekend to one of my favorite art supply stores in melbourne and i will share all of that with you what i find there next week until then have a great week and i'll see you then bye Thank you.